free to save me in the oh tell me now where could I go? Oh fly here with friends with friends I love so dear. Comfort I get from God's word. Yeah, when I think the children can not oh tell me now where did I go but to the Lord? Oh, oh, oh tell me where did I go? Oh where did I go? I'm seeking a refuge for my soul. I'm needing a friend to take me in the Oh, tell me now, where could I go but to the home? Oh, amen. Our next lecture will be number 973, after which we will have our scripture reading and our prayer. Number 972. Everybody be happy over this. If you have a look, you get a thing. There's a happy land of promise over in the great kingdom where the saints of birds will soon glory share. Where the souls of men shall end and live on forevermore. Everybody will be happy over there. Singing everybody will be Solomon surpassed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. And all the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. Each man brought his presence, articles of silver and gold, garments, armor, spices, horses, and mules, and had set great year by year. Solomon had 4,000 stars for horses and chariots, and 12,000 horsemen who were stationed in the chariot city, and with the king at Jerusalem. So he reigned over all the kings from the river to the land of the Philistines, as far as the border of Egypt. The king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stone. He made cedar trees as abundant as the sycamores, which are in the long lowlands. And they brought horses to Solomon from Egypt and from all lands. Now the rest of the acts of Solomon, first and last, are they not written in the book of Nathan the prophet, in the prophecy of Isaac and Shalonite, and in the vision of Edom the seer concerning Jeroboam the son of Nebat? Solomon reigned in Jerusalem for all over all Israel. 
30 years. There's no doubt of reading, watching for the readers here, and the reviewers of his work. Let us stand for prayer, please. Let us all pray, please. Father God, we come to you at this time with our heads and our hearts humble. Father God, just thank you for the blessings you poured upon us. Father, we want to thank you for the blessings rise up this morning. A day we haven't seen before, Father. We hope we do everything in this day. Please and accept and not accept. Father, we also want to thank you for our past. Father, we want to thank you for our past because of the past that we have that we can understand what we need to do in the future. Father, we hope and pray that as we continue to live this life, that we do everything pleasing and acceptable to you. Father, we also want to pray for our present, because the present is all that we have. Father, we pray that the present that we have, that we may continue to share love one with the other and bring the loss to Christ. Father, we pray then and hope that you will bless us with the future. Father, the future that we can continue to love one another, build the church, build this congregation, and continue to bring the laws that they can also understand that they need Christ in their life. Amen. Father, we always want to pray for our leadership here. Bless our minister, Brother Foster. Bless him, Father, with his knowledge and his wisdom that he has. Father, he can continue to preach to us what thus said the Lord. Amen. Father, we want to pray for our elders here. Bless these men. Bless them, Father, and keep them, Father, that they can continue to strengthen and lead this congregation of women. Father, we want to pray also for our deacons and the ones that's coming forth. Father, we pray that they make us stand and be, build the type of men, be the type of men, that they can also lead and help with the others. Father, again, bless us, Father. Get our minds and our hearts right. Open our minds, Father, that we can hear the word this evening, I mean, this afternoon. That, that we can continue to be a strong Christian in the future. Yes. Help us, keep us, and, and, and bless us, Father. Mm -hmm. This prayer we say in Jesus' blessed name, our Lord and our Savior, let the church say amen. Amen. Yes. All right, we're going to turn our hymn books to number 985. Number 985. When the morning comes, we'll sing the first and third stand. Reminds me of that old song. You know, you're going to cry at night, but joy comes in the morning. If you have it, let us together sing. Trials dark on every hand. And we cannot understand all the ways that God lead us to that blessed promised land. But he'll guide us with his eyes and we'll flow till we die. And we will understand it better by and by. Together y'all by and by. Lord of wind, the morning comes. Together, y'all, the saints of God, together in, and we will tell the story of how we overcome, and we will understand by and by. Tim. Temptation, hidden snare, often takes us unaware, and our hearts are made to bleed for each thoughtless word or deed. And we wonder why test when we do our best, but we'll understand it better. By and by, together y'all by and by, Lord of when the morning comes, together y'all, the saints of 
God together in hope, and we will tell the story how we overcome, and we will understand better by and by. Amen. Our next election will be number 112. After which we're going to have our blessed and beloved brother Brian Foster come forth and bring him to us the bread of life. Number 112. We'll see how it is. You make it there. I know you're going to want to see it. We're going to see by and by how the ransom singers will get the lift and my Lord, we're going to see, we're going to see by and by oh, what joy when we get home, we're going to rest. Beneath that cloud, let stone in the land where saints will never, my Lord, we gonna sing, we gonna sing by and by in that mighty chorus voices will so sweetly, my Lord, we gonna sing. We're going to sing by and by. God will be our sadness pleasure. There will never, my Lord, we're going to sing. We're going to sing by and by. Oh, what joy when we get home. We're going to rest beneath that cloud left on in the land where saints will never, my Lord, we're going to sing, we're going to sing by and by victory and love will be everlasting my lord we're gonna sing hallelujah by and by praising our redeemer there beside the crystal my lord we're gonna sing we're gonna sing by and by, oh, what joy when we get home, we gonna rest beneath that cloud, let stone in the land where saints will never, my Lord, we gonna sing. We gonna sing by and by. Oh, what joy we be! We gonna rest in the sunshine. Sing hallelujah by and by. Let the church say amen. amen. Uh, once again, we are thankful to God Almighty uh, for granting us yet another opportunity to come and to worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, we pray that uh, all of those who are in attendance here with us today will be able to uh, study along with us as we study a portion of God's Word. 
Uh, we're appreciative for those who are present in person as well as those who may be present in an online format. Uh, we want you to know if you are visiting with us that you are our honored guest. And as we present God's word, we pray that it will have an impact on you to make you want to make a change in your own life. I want to say that we are appreciative of the devotion that has been rendered this morning. We are thankful for Brother Ronnie leading us in those songs, uh, Brother Green leading us in those songs this morning, as well as the prayer that was offered in our behalf, uh, Brother Mason, and also the reading of the text by Brother or reading of the scripture by Brother Heisen. Uh, now, I know that those of you who were looking at the screen, you saw First Chronicles, uh, and he read from Second Chronicles. Uh, when I was uh, younger in the ministry, when a different passage was led, I would preach from the passage that was read. Uh, well, that passage was dealing with the prosperity of uh, Solomon. You know, Solomon had asked for uh, wisdom, and God said, since you have asked me for this, then I'm not only going to give you wisdom, but I'm also going to give you riches. And uh, that passage dealt with the riches. Uh, but since I had prepared to go from 1 Chronicles chapter 9, I will spare you from going from 1 Chronicles 9 to 2 Chronicles 9. Is that all right? <laughs> yeah, that might be a long sermon. Um, First Chronicles chapter 9, we want to draw our attention there. Uh, First Chronicles chapter 9, and we will relook, we will look at verses 22 through 30. Uh, we keep in mind that uh, as we prepare to look at these verses, that um, uh, we want to always remember Romans 15, 4, and 5, where the Bible says, For whatsoever things were written, aforetime or written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Uh, now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded one towards another according to Christ Jesus. Will you please stand with me for the reading of the text? First Chronicles chapter 9, verses 22 through 30. The Bible says, All those chosen as gatekeepers were 212. They were recorded by their genealogy in their villages. David and Samuel the seer had appointed them uh, to their trusted office. So they and their children uh, were in charge of the gates of the house of the Lord, the house of the tabernacle, by assignment. The gatekeepers were assigned to the four directions, the east, west, north, and south. And their brethren in the villages had to come with them from the time from time to time for seven days. For in this trusted office were four chief gatekeepers. Uh, they were Levites, and they uh, had charge over the chambers and treasuries of the house of God. And they lodged all around the house of God because they had the responsibility, uh, and they were in charge of opening uh, it every morning. Uh, now some of them were in charge of the serving vessels, for they brought them in and took them out by count. Some of them were appointed over the furnishings and over the implements of the sanctuary and over the fine flour and the wine, and the oil, and the incense, and the spices. And some of the sons of the priests made the ointment of the spices. Uh, you may be seated. We'd like to use as our subject for this morning, 
God's perspective of a servant. God's perspective of a servant. Uh, keep it in mind, our theme, uh, as we talk about uh, having a heart for the harvest, it's important for us to understand how God views a servant. Uh, theme coming from Matthew chapter 9, verses 37 and 38. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest who, uh, and ask him, why? What are we asking for? We're asking him to provide us with laborers. Uh, as we do that, let's, let's sing just a little bit more, a little bit more, and then we will uh, enter into our, our lesson. Just a little of God is real. There are some things, are oh, some things I may not know, not know. And there are some places I can go, I cannot go, but I am sure, I am sure of this one thing. But my God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. Don't you know God is real? He's so real in my soul. Yes, my God is real, for He has washed and made me whole. His love for me. Well, it's like pure gold. And my God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. Have you ever considered what it is that God wants from you as a Christian? When was the last time that you thought about how your service to God has been received? Sometimes as we go back through the course of biblical history, we can see that there were some who thought that their work and their worship was pleasing to God, yet they found out later that it displeased God. We don't have to go back very far to find service that displeased God. We can go with the children of Adam and Eve. If you recall, Cain and Abel both offered sacrifices to the Lord. The Bible says that Abel's sacrifice was more accepted than that of Cain. We can also look a little further down the chart of history, and we can think about all of the work that it took in the book of Genesis to build the Tower of Babel, and how they uh, had desired to reach the heavens, and God came down and scattered their languages so, and scattered the people so that they would not be able to be successful. What are you saying? What we're saying is that sometimes servanthood and servitude can be pleasing to God as well as displeasing to God. What we may feel is pleasing to God may not be pleasing to God. And the only way that we can truly understand what God really wants from us is to be able to look at what God has said and to examine the things that we find written in Scripture. As we prepare to uh, extend our servants who will work in the capacity of aiding in this congregation and aiding in uh, the community.
providing for the needs of those of us who worship and serve the Lord. We want to be reminded of what we see in First Chronicles. Keeping in mind that First Chronicles is one of the books of history from the Old Testament. Uh, as we look at chapter 9, it can be divided or subdivided into several portions. The first portion, verses 1 through 16, actually deals with the priests and the Levites and their return back to Jerusalem and how they were going to uh, dwell in the land of uh, Jerusalem. When we get to verse 17, we see that gatekeepers are to be appointed. And as these gatekeepers are appointed, not only are they there to uh, protect those who have come back to Jerusalem, uh, but they are also there to make sure uh, that the gates can remain open so that those who may want to trickle back into Jerusalem will be able to do so. Uh, we also see that a list of responsibilities were given to them. And then it ends with uh, the family of King Saul uh, around verse 35 through verses 44. But we want to really focus our attention on the Levite gatekeepers because you see it was these individuals who were chosen to help maintain uh, the congregation that existed in Jerusalem. Uh, as we look around us today, we may not need 212 men uh, to stand up and to protect and to provide for us. But as we look around us, we can see that there is definitely a need to have men that are able to stand up and not only provide those things uh, that are needed, but also uh, stand up and to be accounted for. Uh, when we look at working in the church, we must understand that uh, work has to be accounted for. In other words, there is an accountability. And the accountability is not just for those who are uh, assigned to the work, but it's also for those at whom they are assigned to work to or towards. Uh, so we all have a responsibility for each other. Now in the rereading of the text, First Chronicles chapter 9, verses 22 through 30, once again, the Bible says all those chosen as gatekeepers were 212. Uh, they were recorded by their genealogies in their, in their villages. David and Samuel the seer had appointed them uh, to their trusted office. So they and their children were in charge of the gates of the house of the Lord, uh, the house of the tabernacle by assignment. The gatekeepers were assigned uh, to the four directions, the east, west, north, and south. And their brethren in the villages uh, had uh, to come uh, with them from time to time for seven days. For in this trusted office were four chief gatekeepers. Uh, they were Levites, and they had charge over the chambers and the treasuries of the house of God. And they lodged around, all around the house of God because they had the responsibility and they were in charge of opening uh, it every morning. Now some of them were in charge of the serving vessels for they brought them in and took them out by count. Uh, some of them were appointed over the furnishings and over the implements of the sanctuary and over the fine flowers and the wine and the oil and the incense and the spices and some of the sons of the priests made the ointment uh, of the spices. Well, first and foremost, as we look at uh, God's perspective of a servant, we must understand that servants are to be chosen. Servants are to be chosen. Uh, when we talk about servitude, uh, we can see once again in verse number 22 uh, that the Bible records that these individuals were chosen as gatekeepers. 
Uh, that means those who were in Jerusalem had to look at some of, among themselves and say, I believe that I can trust this person to watch the gates. Uh, now, I don't know about you, but that's an important position because not only do they have access to open the gates and to close the gates, but they also are able to warn you when the enemies are approaching the gates. So that is a very important position to have. And as we note here, that these individuals had to be chosen, and when they were chosen, they were brought to David and to Samuel. The Bible says in the New King James Version, that Samuel the seer, we would know him as the prophet. He was the one that God had appointed to watch over the people and provide spiritual guidance to the people. And they were trusted with work uh, in order to try to organize the people who were coming back to Jerusalem. Let me tell you something, church. Organization is important. An unorganized church is a chaotic church. And a chaotic church cannot be a successful church until organization is put in place and organization uh, uh, actually responds to the responsibilities that have been given. Keep in mind that as we talk about this, uh, that you have to choose the right type of person. Uh, in Matthew chapter 20, uh, we see a story in reference, uh, 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 a parable is given by Jesus about those who work in the vineyard. Now, as we look at this particular story, and we will just summarize it, the Bible compares it to the kingdom of heaven. Uh, and he talks about a landowner who goes out early in the morning to hire people to labor. And as he hires these individuals, he comes along the third hour of the day and he asks some people who are standing in the marketplace if they want to go out and work. Uh, has anybody ever needed a job? Yeah. And when you need a job, sometimes you got to go to the place where, where, where somebody can see you, where they can hire you. The marketplace was that place. Uh, and this landowner went to the marketplace, and he was looking for somebody who could work. And, and he told them what he would pay them, and he gathered them together, took them to the vineyard, and they were starting to work during the course of the day. Well, we see a little, long, a little later on, around the sixth hour, he went back to the marketplace. Uh, why? Because we got more work that needs to be done. We need more laborers. Uh, so he goes in on the sixth hour, and he finds more laborers. He goes back on the ninth hour, and he finds more laborers. He goes back on the eleventh hour, and he finds more laborers. And he gives all of the laborers an opportunity to work in the vineyard. Now, as we compare this to the church, we have to understand that God is always calling people into the vineyard to work. God is always looking for people who are willing to serve and willing to work, work in the vineyard. And as he is looking for folk, we have to understand that our attitude is just as important as the work that we do. Now, there were some people in the vineyard that had been working since the third hour of the day. And when it came down to the end of the day, uh, the Bible tells us that some of those folk were upset because they all received the same pay or the same wage for the work that they had been doing. Well, uh, some of them said, well, we've been here all day long. Is it all right for me to paraphrase this? Yeah, we've been here since 9 o'clock in the morning. And we done worked all day long, and you gave me the same thing that you gave somebody that came in on the 11th hour. Well, sometimes just because you've been there longer don't mean that you're doing better work. And sometimes it doesn't mean that your work that you have your work has equated to the work of some of those who have worked in a, 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 a lesser amount of time. There's some people that can do a whole lot more in three hours than other folk can do in nine. Hello. 
uh, and folk feel like because I've been there for 30 years, 40 years, that I have some sense of seniority. Not so when it comes to God's perspective on the servant. God is looking for people who are willing to work. And he comes back in that particular, uh, in that particular text uh, and he reminds the servant, didn't you agree to work for this wage? Why are you concerned about what somebody else is getting? See, if you're going to be a servant in the kingdom of God, you got to stay focused on what it is that God has given you to do. Too many folk are looking around at other folk and looking at what God has given them and how God has blessed them and they have forgotten how God has blessed them. See, it's, it, 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 it's not about you, it's not about me, but it's about him. It's about doing what he wants us to do. And if we keep our focus on him, we won't be worried about other folk. We'll just go in the vineyard and do the work that has been assigned to us. Right. I want to focus specifically on verse number 16. Because the Bible says in verse 16, Matthew chapter 20, it says, so the last will be first, and the first will be last. Now notice this, for many are called, but few. See, a lot of folk will go in. But it's not about all those who go in. It's about those who go in who have been chosen. And when we talk about the chosen servants, it's important to know uh, that the chosen servants are chosen for a specific reason. They are chosen for a specific task. Uh, now, in the New Testament, in Acts chapter 6, uh, beginning at verse number one, uh, we see there that there was an issue that had come uh, before the children of Israel, uh, the Christians uh, that were uh, making up the church there in Acts chapter six. Uh, and they were all at this point, uh, they were all Jews. So when I say children of Israel, I'm speaking of those who are in the children of Israel who have become Christians. Uh, now, the Bible says, now in those days, uh, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, uh, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, uh, because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. What we are talking about here, uh, well first let's just examine this particular verse. Notice uh, that the need occurred because first, the number of the disciples was multiplied. If you're not growing, you don't need extra help. Hello? Boy, it's quiet in here. You got 100 people this week, and you got 100 people four months from now, and 100 people two years from now. You don't need no more help. Because you're not, help me, y'all, you're not what? The help comes when growth comes, and it comes when there is a missing piece to what should be taking place. Now, let's notice what the Bible actually says. He says, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews. Now, what is it about the Hebrews? What is the complaint? Ah, the Hellenists are saying that the Hebrews' the widows are getting everything that they need as far as food. But the Hellenist widows are not getting the same thing that the Hebrew widows are getting. See, sometimes we look at this and we think it's all about food distribution. No, this is about equality. This is about, this is about treating people fairly. See, we have some in the church that, that, that will receive special treatment, special treatment over others. They will always be the first ones in line to get something. They will always get the good and the best of, what is there, of, of whatever there is to offer. And then sometimes other folk end up lacking. You know, everybody can't do what some other folk do in the church. You know, when we talk about, uh, when, when Paul was talking about uh, communing or eating, 
Uh, and, and some people go and use this verse out of context when he says, uh, have ye not homes to eat in? Yeah. In the book of 1 Corinthians, they say, he, uh, have ye not homes to eat in? You know, that they should eat at home. It wasn't about them eating. It was about them uh, gloating about what they had and others around them not having anything. You see, when you talk about church treasury, church treasury ought to be used sometimes to equate everything to everybody. Everybody can't go out to the ball game. Hello, church. Because the ball game costs some and if you got the money, you can go. But if you don't have it, oh well. <laughs> uh, are y'all seeing this? And it's right there in the text. Uh, you see, there were some that had, and there were some that did not. And because uh, of the Hellenist widows being neglected, that's what called the argument. The twelve was summoned by the multitude. Lord have mercy. Now, see, if you want to change stuff in the church, notice who, who it was that made the change. The preachers didn't come to them. The, 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 the Bible talks about the disciples. It's talking about the 12. Uh, the men that were preaching the gospel. They didn't come to the people, but the people came to them. Do y'all see that? They came to them and let them know this is what we need. If your mouth is closed, don't complain about anything. Hello. The Bible says the twelve summoned the multitude. Uh, th then the twelve summoned the multitude uh, of the disciples and said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Now, they had already come to them. Uh, so when they came to them, the 12 said, we can't stop doing what we're doing to, to help you uh, with this issue. But we do have a solution for you. Verse 3, therefore, brethren, seek out from among you. What are we talking about? We're talking about choosing. Seek out from among you the you seven good uh, seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give you we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. They're simply saying that we're going to keep on preaching, but we want to resolve the problem that you have. Uh, and since we're going to resolve it, what we need for you to do is to choose. Now, if you choose somebody and they don't work out, whose fault is that? <laughs> it ain't the apostles' fault. You chose them. If you choose somebody and they stop working, now, common sense would let you know if you Anybody ever work in a management position? If you, if you ever worked in management, have you ever had an employee that didn't do their job? Now, here's, here's a question, and you don't have to answer it out loud. Did you keep that employee very long? If you don't do the job you were assigned to do, then either you get some training to do it better, or either you sit down church, or it's quiet in here. Sometimes, just because you get appointed don't mean that you stay appointed. And that's with any position. If you're not doing the work, you might need to sit down. I know this is not what y'all were expecting. Uh, verse number five, the Bible says, and uh, the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen and a man, a man of full of faith that, uh, of the Holy Spirit, Philip and Porpheus and uh, Nicanor and Timon and uh, Parmesan and, Na and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch. These men were chosen to do the work 
Now, as these men were chosen, we can also see from First Chronicles that not only were they, uh, not only did people have to be chosen, but they had to be appointed. The appointment is the official announcement. It is the official proclaiming uh, that these individuals have been assigned to do a certain work. Uh, we see that once again in uh, First Chronicles chapter two and verse number uh, nine and verse number twenty-two, where the Bible says David and Samuel the seer had appointed them to their trusted office. Well, what about us? What about the church today? Are we not to uh, be able to appoint those who need to be appointed? I believe the answer to that question is yes. Uh, we see in Acts 6, verse 6, uh, that they were set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. The laying of hands on them uh, was a way of acknowledging them, appointing them for the task of making sure everybody got to eat. Hello. Not only do we see that appointment was necessary, but we also see that accountability was necessary. As we read in uh, Acts 6, uh, verses 1 through 5, there were certain criterion that was given. Uh, and they had to look to make sure that those individuals met that criterion. Uh, we see that in First Chronicles chapter 9 and verse 22, that these individuals were recorded by their genealogy. Uh, in other words, there were records of them. Folk knew them. Don't appoint somebody for something if you don't know anything about them. You know, well, I, I think he'll do a good job. Well, what, what are you basing that on? Are you basing that on any kind of experience of what they have done prior to uh, being appointed? Sometimes we just appoint stuff and appoint people just because we need a warm body to fill a seat. Now, that's our perspective. That's not God's perspective. When we talk about these particular things, we have to understand that everybody has to be accounted. And when you are accounted, there is some type of representation of what you can do to fulfill the need that is needed. Second Timothy chapter one and the verse is three through five. We see there that as Paul is writing in his letter to Timothy, the Bible says, I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did, as uh, without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remember the genuine faith that is in you. Now, Paul has recognized that faith is in Timothy. How does he, how is he able to recognize it? The Bible goes on to say, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. Uh, and I am persuaded it's in you also. I see it in you. You're not where your mother and your grandmother are, are, are in reference to faith, but I can see it growing in you just like I saw it in them. I'm looking at your genealogy. I'm looking at your heritage. I'm looking at your upbringing. And sometimes you can determine a lot by how a person has been raised. Yeah, I know that there are people who are able to overcome circumstances, but there are also people who have been groomed and primed to do work in the kingdom. And you have to understand that when you have somebody who is groomed and primed to work in the kingdom, that you need to be considerate of what they can offer to help the kingdom to continue to grow. The gatekeepers, the gatekeepers. And even as we talk about workers in the church today, we can see from First Chronicles that they were, de they were assigned in an area to work. They wasn't roaming around everywhere and doing everything. They had an assigned area to work. 
The Bible says in verse 24, 1 Chronicles chapter 9, the gatekeepers uh, were assigned in four directions. The east, west, north, and south. Uh, we did not have folk that were supposed to be in the east looking out for the south. They were concentrated on the area that they had been given to work in. Now, a simple way to say this is, when you are assigned a work to do, stay in your lane. Do the work that you are been assigned to do. Uh, you know, when everybody is doing the work that they have been assigned, then what you have is a body that is functioning properly. The Bible tells me in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and the verses 14 through 16, the Bible says, For in fact, uh, the body is not one member, but many. Uh, if the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, uh, I am not of the body, it is therefore not of the body. Uh, is, it there, is it therefore not of the body? It's a question that Paul is asking. And then and he goes on in verse 16 and he says, If the ear should say, Because I'm not the eye, I am not a part of the body, is it therefore not? Uh, of the body. He's saying that we all ought to be working together, but stop looking at what other folk are supposed to do, looking at their talent, and use what God gave you. There are some people who are not meant for leadership. Hello. Quiet in here now. Doesn't mean that you're not a good member. Doesn't mean that you can't make it to heaven. Doesn't mean that, that, that you can't help one another and work in a capacity in the church. It just means that you're not fit for leadership. And if you're not fit for leadership, if you're not able to grow in that capacity or grow in that area, then you need to uh, accept what God has given you, work in the areas to strengthen what he has provided you with, and, and not be jealous or envious of those who may have a skill set that God didn't bless you with. When we talked in our Wednesday night class about uh, skills, uh, we talked about Saul. When Saul, uh, when God's spirit had left Saul, Saul needed someone to comfort his spirit. And in comforting his spirit, he needed somebody that was a musician to comfort him. And they didn't go to everybody, but they went to find somebody that had the ability to play instruments well enough and to perform music well enough to soothe his spirit. And that person happened to be David. Now, David had seven brothers. How come they didn't call one of them to play the harp? That's not where God blessed them. You got to understand where God has given you your blessing and work in the areas where you have been blessed. And if you're able to do that and able to do it successfully, then you'll find that the body will move properly in the way that God had formed it to move in the first place. We have to understand also that uh, those, when we talk about servitude, in God's perspective of the servant, not only does he have areas of work that are assigned, but we also see that they have to be people, uh, persons. They have to be able to work with other people. Some people act like they're the Lone Ranger. And they can't, you, you can't do anything uh, with me. I do it by myself, for myself, the way I see fit. And you, got, you alienate other folk that could actually move the work forward. You know, the Bible tells me that two are better than one. Uh, what is it simply saying? It's simply saying the more you're able to work together and communicate together, then the better off you will be in accomplishing the work. When we look at Acts 6, he didn't say find one person that solved the problem. He said find seven. Because at the time, it appeared that seven men would be able to resolve the conflict that existed in the early church. 
Well, when we look at this particular passage, we see in verse number 25 of 1 Chronicles chapter 9, the Bible says, And their brethren in the villages had to come with them from time to time for seven days. So the ones that were appointed had some folk that were coming with them. Now, you can't have a bad attitude and expect for people to work with you. Hello? You can't have a shut off spirit and expect for people to work with you. Now, if you notice in the passage, when it talks about that in, in verse 25, it says, and their brethren in the villages had to come with them. It didn't say for them. The work was to be done together. And sometimes people, when they are appointed, they feel like they have some kind of clout over folk. No, your, your job is to work with folk. And when we start working with each other, and stop making folk feel like we're working for them, then you'll find the spirit that ought to be dwelling within us changing as we work together. Uh, as we continue on, we see that, they, that when God looks at a servant, he's looking for somebody who can uh, be appointed, who can be chosen, be appointed, uh, that has a track record, that has uh, the ability to work in an area of work. He's looking for somebody who can work with other folk. Uh, he's looking for somebody that not only can work with other folk, uh, but he's also looking for people who are responsible, who can be given a task and they can fulfill the task. Now, I want you to understand this, that as uh, as uh, Saul, uh, as uh, Solomon, not Solomon, as uh, as uh, David and uh, Samuel, as David and Samuel uh, appointed these men, David and Samuel gave them the freedom to do the work that they needed to do. They didn't need David and Samuel. Look at over their shoulders. Woo, boy, it's, it's a hard thing to try to work. Somebody always looking over your shoulder. Well, I wouldn't have done it that way. Well, it's not your job to do. <laughs> if you appoint somebody to do a job, let them do the job that they have been appointed to do. If you see that there, there is some lacking, then that's where you can provide additional assistance to help them get better. Now, if you need to get better at your job, then accept the help that's being offered. Some people think, well, I know it. Well, you might not know as much as you think you know. And there may be other areas that, that, that can enhance your ability to do what you do if you're just willing to listen to somebody else. Uh, one of my fathers in the gospel used to tell this old story about a truck that had gotten stuck on a bridge. And they, uh, the truck, was, they were unable to move the truck. And everybody was trying to figure out how can we get this truck on the other side of the bridge. Uh, and they were trying to pull it and they were trying to push it and all of that and it, it wouldn't move, it wouldn't budge. Uh, some wheels were getting stuck into the uh, groves of the bridge and, and finally there was a little boy who came along he said, I know how we can, uh, I know how we can get the truck to move. Uh, and nobody wanted to listen to the little boy. And finally, after they did everything that they knew to do, uh, somebody finally turned to the boy and said, well, what? What can we do to get this truck to move since you know so much and we are the drivers of the truck and we can't get it to move? He said, well, if you just let the air, little air out of the tires, he said, then you'll be able to push the truck and the truck will be able to move. Now, the point is, is that sometimes the one that you don't expect to know the answer is the one that has the answer. But if you're not willing to listen to the ones that have the suggestion, you might miss out on being able to move something forward that otherwise you couldn't move. The responsibility. Uh, and going back now to 1 Chronicles chapter 9, verses 26 through 30, the Bible says, uh, for in this trusted office were four chief gatekeepers, 
uh, now the gatekeepers, they were Levites, uh, and they had charge over the chambers and the treasury of the house of God. Now, I'm going to stop right there. If you're going to assign somebody to do something, give them what they need to do it. Well, you know, the Bible tells me money answers all things. Now, it does say the love of money is the root of all evil. That's why, that's why you got to account for people who love money. Uh, now, loving money don't mean that they love to spend money. Some folks just love money. <laughs> and they, they fist are so tight that you can't squeeze a nickel out of it. <laughs> but that's not the way God's king. The, the money don't belong to you. The money belongs to God. And so we got to use the money to make sure that God's work can be done. So if someone is appointed to a task, uh, we can see here that those who were appointed, those four men that were appointed for different areas, they had charge of the treasury. They could make a decision on how much it was going to take to get something done, and we don't see David, nor do we see Samuel getting in the way saying you can't have it. Verse 27, the Bible says they lodged all around the house of God because they had a responsibility. The doors had to be open every morning. Now, that meant that this person had to be a person who'd get up. Y'all looking at me funny. You know, if you got to be there to open the door in the morning, you got to get there for everybody else. Somebody got to make sure that we got water in the pool. And the water is warm. It's all right. <laughs> Somebody got to make sure that if it's hot, we can cool it down in here. If it's cold, we can warm it up in here. And you can't do that if you get in there at the same time as everybody else. Am I saying anything? The Bible goes on to say there were some that were in charge of that. There were some that were in charge of the serving vessels. Vessels had to be, whatever they were going to be serving with and eating out of had to be clean. It had to be prepared for the people who were coming in and those uh, uh, people who were coming in and they had to not only make sure those vessels came in at the right time, they also had to make sure they went out at the right time. That means we got to have somebody to clean up. Everybody here when it's time to eat. <laughs> but after everybody ate, who taking out the trash? Who's sweeping up? Who's vacuuming up? We say, well, we don't want no food in here. Well, yeah, all right, I hear you. But 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 somebody still got to be accountable for making sure everything is put back in its proper place. When we look at what God did, we see that he made sure that these things were to take place. Verse number 29, the Bible says, some of them were appointed over the furnishings, over the implements of the sanctuary. They were there to make sure that when a service took place, no matter what kind of service it was, that they had everything ready to go when it was time for that to take place. And they even had somebody over the wine. <laughs> yeah, some 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 folk might have been in that wine a little bit too much. <laughs> Somebody had to guard the wine. <laughs> Make sure that they had enough wine and enough oil to do what they needed to do when they needed to do it. So we're talking about responsibilities. Even as we talk about elders and deacons and even ministers we see that there are responsibilities. Each has been given responsibilities. When we look at uh, the things that we notice in 1 Timothy chapter 3, we can see that the responsibilities that we look at or that we notice are, are things that deal with certain areas uh, of a person's makeup. Yes, we talk about uh, the desire and we talk about the, the good work uh, but the Bible talks about them being blameless and it talks about uh, the husband of one wife all of that is talking about their uh, 
their, 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 uh, when it goes into the idea of, of being uh, temperate and uh, sober-minded, and, and that means able to make rational decisions. You don't want somebody who can't think trying to lead you or resolve problems. The last thing you need is somebody who can't make a decision in charge of making decisions. Uh, good behavior, hospitality, uh, you know, these are things that are dealing with uh, a person's, a person's character, person's character. These uh, things deal with the areas of character, they deal with the area of reputation, and they also deal with, uh, with family structure. Uh, they deal with areas that deal with knowledge, uh, you know, and wisdom. These are things that when we look at the qualifications and you actually group them together, you can see that there are certain qualifications that deal with a person's reputation. If you don't have a good reputation within, you don't have to worry about having a good reputation without. You got to have a good reputation within and without. Hello, church. Take a look at Titus. When, when you talk about uh, having the ability and the character, is this a person that is after filthy lucre? Is this a person that has uh, some gentleness in them? Is this a person that is quarrelsome? They're always trying to pick a fight. You got to look at all of that. Those are things that are necessary for us to understand and see as we talk about uh, the appointments, we talk about the selections. We keep this in mind as we bring this lesson to a close. God doesn't make anybody serve. Service is a choice. It's an option that we decide to take. The Bible tells me in Mark chapter 8 and the verse is 34, when he called the people to himself uh, with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. God is looking for individuals who are willing to follow him, who are willing to serve him. It's not about having a title. It's not about what you have done in the past. It's, it's about your willingness to serve the Lord. And as we talk about this service of the Lord, let us take on the attitude that Isaiah writes about in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse number 8. The Bible says also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who uh, will go for us? Then, who said it? Can y'all say that? Y'all see it? Then, who said it? I see. So, we need some more eyes in the church. Hello. Then I said, here I am. Sin. God is looking for folk who are ready to go and be sent to do his work. Talking about God's perspective of a servant. If you're here this morning, you need to be examining yourself. Am I worthy of being a servant? The Bible tells us that we ought to make our calling and election sure. What is he talking about? Make sure that you want to do and want to serve God. If you want to serve God, you will study his word. You will be in attendance. You will have the right spirit. You will be willing to make some changes. You will be able to work with people. You will be able to suppress some of your own personal thoughts and ideas for the sake of the good of the whole body. If you're really willing to work for the Lord, if you're here this morning, you're not a member of the body of Christ. You're not a member of the church that Jesus has established, the church that we find written on the pages of inspiration. The opportunity to, uh, to announce and to proclaim that you want to be saved according to scripture is right here, right now. How do you do that? You must hear and understand that Jesus came, died on the cross for our sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day. 
If you've heard that and you believe it, then you are definitely on your way. The Bible lets us know that not only do we need to hear that message and believe it, but we also must repent of sin. Luke 13 and 3, the Bible says, I tell you, neighbor, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. We must make a change in our lives. That change ought to produce enough in us that we want to make a public statement that we believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Matthew 10, 32, the Bible says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before me, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven, and then be buried with him in baptism, Acts 2, 38. Peter said unto them, Repent. Be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If that is your desire, we're going to ask you to come as we stand and as we sing the Savior's invitation, why don't you come? so attentively and I pray that I said something to cause us to think about where we are and where we need to be. Brother Rodney, yes, sir. appreciate that message this morning. But this message is not just a message for deacons or elders. This is a message of Christian folk. I hope and pray that we all take heed. Now is the time to set aside uh, for the invitation of prayer. We have several cards at this time. Did anyone will get a chance to fill out a card. Anyone else? As we pray this morning, we trust and pray that you remember the request we made this morning, and that you will remember to pray for individuals throughout the week. This is Nathan. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we are thankful this morning for you allowing us to gather at this time in this facility, as well as those folks online. Lord, we trust and pray that the things that we have done so far has been pleasing and acceptable unto you, Lord. Lord, we know we are only here because of you. Lord, have mercy upon us. Please, Lord, continue to be patient with us. Lord, we just pray for the strength that we all need. We are all able to take this journey day by day, Father. Because, Lord, one day, this journey is going to end. And, Lord, we, 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 we are not gathering just to be gathering. Lord, we are gathering, Lord, because we want to be able to that we can spend eternity with you. Father, please help us. Help us to get it right, Lord. 
Build us up where we're torn down. Lord, help us, Lord, to love one another like you love us. But sometimes, Lord, sometimes we fight these demons that we're dealing with in this old physical flesh. Lord, help us. Help us to get more into the spirit by studying of your word, holding on to your word, believing in your word, Lord, and applying those things in our daily walk. Father, we pray this morning for Devante and Rianne, a young couple. Lord, we just continue to pray that you give them strength. Help them to work out their situation, Lord, but most of all, help them to put you first. Lord, it's just amazing when we put you first, things seem to work out. But we struggle when we put you secondary. So give us all the strength to be able to do that, Lord. We pray for the request Brother Ryan and made for Sister Maxwell, Lord. She's dealing with some living situations, Lord. Lord, you know what she's dealing with. You know what she's going through. But Lord, we thank Brother Ronnie for having the courage to be able to stand and expel. Lord, we pray for Brother Heisen and the loss of his grandmother, Lord. We pray for him during this time that he'll be traveling later this week. That he'd be able, Lord, to go there and be able to encourage and be that light for the family. And Lord, we pray for uh, Sister Barbara and the family who are traveling. We pray for the Roberts family who are traveling. Lord, there are many of our folks who are traveling at this time, Father. We we know, Lord, how dangerous the highways and the airways and are at this time that we're living in. Lord, please watch over them. Keep them safe. Bless them to get back, back to their place of abode, O oh Lord. And Lord, we pray for Sister Maddie request for her dad, Brother Holloway, Lord. Praying for a better health and strength, O oh Lord. Please be with him, O oh Lord, as he keep you in mind, O oh Lord, and trying to hold you tight, O oh Lord, as he get older in age, O oh Lord. And just thank you for Sister Maddie and the family who continue to be there for their dad, Lord. Lord, we also just pray at this time for Brother Torrance. Lord, he's asking prayer for his family. His family is dealing with a lot of uh, illness, he's dealing with a lot of things that are taking place, oh Lord. Uh, and he's just praying for his, his aunt, his cousins. And Lord, we, 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 we know, Father, we know when we come to you and we ask you for strength and prayers at this time, Lord, we know that you're going to answer, Lord. And Lord, help us to also know and understand that sometimes when you do answer, it may not be according to our will, but it may be according to your will, Father. Lord, we also pray for Terry this morning. Terry is, is with us. Lord, it's good to see him in the audience, oh Lord. Lord, he's just thanking, want to thank the church for the pearls that's been sent up on his behalf. And Lord, he's, he, he's, he's trying to rededicate his life uh, to you, Father. Help him, help his family to help him be that Christian, regardless of what condition he may be in. He can still keep you first and foremost. And Lord, we also pray for Big West's request uh, for his daughter, Tatiana, Lord, who's traveling for a job opportunity, Lord. Uh, please be with her, keep her safe. And Lord, also, Wes and Denise are just asking prayers for they are facing some important decisions that they got to make. And Lord, we know that if we come to you and we keep you first, Lord, you will guide us through those things. And Lord, we also pray for Sister Virgie. She's asking prayers for a classmate, um, Kathy, Lord, uh, who lost her brother. Uh, Lord, and she's just asking special prayers for the family. Uh, they are taking it pretty hard. But Lord, you got an angel uh, in Virgie that's going to be there to comfort the family. Lord, please strengthen her. Let her be that light. Let all of us be a light to this world that we're living in, Lord, because there seem to be so many things going on around us that sometimes, Lord, we just shake our head and we wonder, like, what is going on? Lord, help us rise above these clouds, above this murkiness that may be in front of us. 
so we can be able to see more clearly, Lord, as we look into the heavens gazing unto you, Father, from which our help coming from, Lord. Help us during these critical times that we're in. And we just thank you, Lord, for our children, our family here at Wheelis. Lord, we pray for our kids who are in the school place. Lord, they are facing a lot of peer pressure. They're facing a lot of times, Lord, where you got this drug going around, Lord, that 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 that, 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 that kids are tempted by. Uh, Lord, all it takes is one time. But that one time, Lord, help them to understand it could take them out. Help our parents to be able, and our grandparents and us, all of us to help train and raise our children in the way they should go. There's so many different activities and things that are going on that are pulling us all away from the foundation of you, Lord. But Lord, help us to be able to stand firm, hold on to those things that matters from heaven. And Lord, we thank you for the message this morning. Lord, it was one that we all needed. Lord, if we're going to grow, we got to start right here at home. And Lord, we need all of us, all of us to help us to be able to do that. Lord, it's not about trying to impress anybody, but Lord, it's all about trying to keep you first and foremost. Lord, help us. And Lord, when we have done all that we can do, we can't do no more, Father. When our hands lie folded and rest, when we got to stand before you, Lord, we want to hear your voice say, well done. Lord, and that's good enough. Amen. Take us on home, Lord, so we can spend eternity with you. But this is our prayer in the Son's name. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. In preparation for communion, let us turn to hymn books number 28. Number 28. If you have a list, you have seen. Oh, what wondrous love see freely shown for you and me by the one who did atone just to show his matchless grace jesus suffered for the rain in just in my knee alone oh what love Matchless love, oh, what love for me was shown. His forever I will be for the love he gave to me. When he suffered all of Morning, church. It is my privilege and honor to be able to lead us in the breaking of bread this morning, remembering the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the one and only Savior of the world, our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. We know that Christ himself establishes this, this Lord's Supper when he was in the room with the other twelve celebrating the Passover meal. And we can find this scripture in the book in the book of Matthew, the chapter is 26, starting at the 26th verse in the Bible reads. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of our sins. And then we see where the disciples came together in, in the book of Acts, the chapter is 20. They came together on the first day of the week to the take of the Lord's Supper. And we 
find in Acts chapter 20 and the verse of 7 where the Bible reads, Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart on the next day, spoke to them and continued the message until midnight. But we find also where the church at Corinth had gotten away from the pattern in which Christ himself had established it. And the Apostle Paul had to correct the Corinthians in how to partake of the Lord's Supper, for they had uh, made these sacraments a mere meal. And in the book of 1 Corinthians, you can, in the chapter 11, we see where Paul corrects them. Starting at the 23rd verse, and the Bible reads, For I have received from the Lord, that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do proclaim the Lord's death until he come. Therefore, whoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. For this cause many are sick and weak, and weak among you, and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. For when we are chastened of the Lord, we are not condemned with the world. But when we are judged, we are not chased, but we are not condemned with the world. For <clears throat> That we may not, therefore, my brethren, when we come together to eat, wait one for another. But if any man is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment, and the rest I will set in order when I come. So as we prepare to eat, we prepare to take of the Lord's Supper. Let us not do as the Corinthian church do. Let us remember what has been done for us. Jesus came to this earth. And was walked in our shoes, yet was without sin. Died at the hands of cruel men, was buried in a borrowed tomb, rose on the third day with all heaven and the power of heaven and earth in his hand. Let us remember the sacrifice which was made on our behalf as we prepare to take of the body and the blood through faith of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Let us pray. Our most kind, wonderful, and righteous God in heaven. Father, we come before your throne of mercy, grace, and love. Father, thanking you so much for the wonderful blessings of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who came down from his home in heaven. Lord, gave his life for the sins of the world, that we may gain salvation through faith, Father, only through him. Father, as we prepare to partake of this bread, which represents the, your Son's body, and the fruit of the vine, which represents your son's blood. May we all partake of it, Father, do it in the way that we have examined ourselves, Father, that we may take it in the way that is well-pleasing and acceptable in my sight, remembering the sacrifice that was made on our behalf. We praise you, Father, and we love you, and we make this prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, your one and only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. That concludes the Lord's Supper. Now at this time, we also find it in Scripture about when we ought to give. And we find this Scripture in 1 Corinthians, the chapter 16, verses 1 and following. Now concerning the collections of the saints that I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, 
that there be no gatherings when I come. And we find the spirit in which we ought to be giving in uh, the book of 2 Corinthians, the chapter is 9, uh, verses 6 and following, and the Bible reads, But this I say, he who soweth sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who soweth bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you, having sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he is dispersed abroad, he is given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Let us go to our Heavenly Father and pray for the giver. Most kind and wonderful God, we come before you once again, Lord, with our heads bowed to the dust of the earth, giving you thanks, Father, for all your many and wonderful blessings, what you continue to do for us, what you have done for us. Father, we know that the things that we have, Father, are not only part of what we have done, but Father, it is because you have been so good to us. And Father, as we prepare to give back a portion of that which you have blessed us with, Father, we pray that we give our best and continue to strive to give our best because you have given us the best. And Father, we just have to remember that it is not about us, it is always about you. And Father, may, uh, may we not only give of our money, but we give of our tithes, we give of our time and our talents and all the things that you have blessed us with that will help us to be better and to help us to be uh, to do your work in your venue. These and all blessings we ask in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Good morning to everybody. Um, there's a few announcements that we have uh, at hand, but first of all, I'd like to just thank everyone who uh, participated um, in the services this morning, uh, of opening prayers, uh, 
singing, preaching, and the greeters that uh, greeted all the uh, people as they came in the front doors. We really appreciate your work. Um, so I do have one uh, guest card uh, that was given to me. Um, if you could please stand and identify yourself, if you don't mind. Um, is Miss, I'm going to probably mispronounce this, uh, Kalia Hawkins? Yeah. Kalea, Kalea Hawkins. Uh, well, uh, thanks for coming by. Your uh, guest has since passed. And so we hope that uh, uh, you come back again and visit us again. It's nice having you in our, our worship service this morning. Amen. Amen. Oh, okay, that is good. That is good. Well, uh, if you need a new home, you know we're here. <laughs> and so, uh, as far as the announcements go, uh, we have uh, several announcements. Um, uh, this Tuesday, we just want to remind everyone about uh, on the 16th about the uh, Tuesday night ladies Bible class is going to be uh, held via Zoom. If we can ask all the uh, ladies that participate that to to be ready for, uh, for that class. And also, uh, Tuesday night coming up on the 23rd is going to be uh, the evangelism uh, ministry meeting on Zoom as well. So we like to ask for those participants to, uh, to be avail available um, for that date as well. Um, we have a men's ministry um, coming up. It's, it's going to be um, on out at uh, Pecan Street uh, Church of Christ. Gonna, they're going to host a men's day. And the uh, lessons are going to be around are you man enough to be like to be Christ-like and it's going to be in Rockdale um, on the 27th uh, starting at 8 uh, 15 in the morning that's Saturday so we like to ask all the men if you have the time and are able to to make it down to Pecan Street Church of Christ to uh, participate in that um, we also have the uh, family and friends day fellowship out at the park uh, oh I'm sorry something else uh, that's going to be uh, here on uh, Family Street Friends Day uh, after Fellowship, uh, Fellowship Mill on 28. Uh, it's going to be coming up. So we ask everyone, to, uh, the members, to invite friends and family uh, to worship service as well as to the uh, uh, Fellowship Mill that we're going to have after that. Um, there's going to be also a Tuesday night uh, ladies' Bible class. Uh, again, that's going to be April 30th on Zoom. It's going to be the... the uh, following Tuesday uh, uh, after that. And uh, Greenville Avenue, there's going to be a uh, registration is going to be open for the Greenville, Greenville Avenue Church of Christ uh, for the Adolescents and Ladies Symposium. It's going to be held on Saturday, uh, May 4th to uh, apply for that online. Uh, we're going to have after Bible class this morning, uh, VBS meeting in the Fellowship Hall is going to be just a short, concise uh, things of the, the, the subject matter, everything dealing with the VBS. So we can ask all of those who normally participate in teaching, but there's also other areas available as well as like for decorating and just different things that go along with VBS. If you just want to come over and learn more about those different uh, items uh, to be had. And we are still asking for um, uh, the on the 24th for the youth conference uh, coming up for 2020. 2024. Um, all the money that will be due on the 28th. Uh, so we're asking all those uh, money to be in uh, on that date for all of those who's going to participate in the youth conference this year. And we also would like to ask to please uh, continue to send photos in uh, for the uh, Mother's Day slideshow that's going to be available um, coming up for Mother's Day on May 12th. Um, and so the site to send those to is going to be Elders at wheelistcoc.org if you can send those pictures there uh, so we can have those ready to be shown in the slideshow. Um, and these are all the announcements that I have. Uh, there are future announcements, um, future events going on um, in the months to come. If you could please make yourself available to the uh, bulletin that shows those uh, items. Uh, and again, as we go out um, for the rest of the week, let's be, those, be the light and be those Christians that God would have us to be. All right, for our closing song, number 959, we'll sing verse of a hymn, then we're going to ask you to 
stand and we'll be dismissed. Has me, I'm sure glad to see you this morning. Praise the Lord, she's okay. here. All right, if you haven't, let us together sing. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Oh, now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our he will hear our faintest, and he will answer. And by now, when you feel a little for yearning, heart and heaven is turned. You will find a little talk with Jesus. Right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right, and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, come for you at this time in prayer. What a, what a privilege. Lord, and um, we're grateful for Brother Foster and bringing the message, bringing a knowledgeable message, helping us to know your word better, to understand it better. I pray that you would help us to uh, go to your word for answers. Lord, when we have questions, that's a very important thing in the church today for us to, when we have uh, uh, any questions to go to your word, help us to do that. Father, help us when we go out today. Uh, to live as Christians should. Amen. Help us to uh, just to be safe. Uh, be with us all in our many concerns. Dear Heavenly Father, you know what those are, and we uh, ought to be grateful for a Father who knows everything and who will listen to us when we uh, pray, Father. Uh, be with us as we go out and eat. Um, as Christians, help us to be good examples uh, to others of what it means to love one another so that they may know that we are Christians by our love, Father. And uh, and so we, we are grateful and uh, help us just to remember all the things that we ought to be grateful for as, as Christians. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.